What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given back with some more Hearthstone Battlegrounds and today a new patch brings some changes into Battlegrounds and I'll be honest this update these patch notes are a little bit tough for me to read as someone like kind of new to the game I don't have everything memorized I don't have a lot of hero powers memorized that I've like never even played with before so when you take a hero power like dancing daryl's hat trick uh this one i actually do think i remember and this seems like a great improvement but a lot of these like um all will burn i don't know what the difference with this is because i thought this was the same before because like i never played with this so I'm not really sure how this one changed at all, and, and I've got similar kind of problems with a lot of these. That I don't really know what the bat. Now, I know what this one was MacGyver, Any Storm King, or Storm something, Any Storm Coil, that's what it is. Um, this was featured pretty heavily in my past two videos. I thought that this hero power was good. Apparently, I was wrong. Um, and like King Mukla. Now do you not have to pay... Do you not have to pay for it? Is that the difference? And now it's at the start of your turn as opposed to the end? I'm not really sure. And that just kind of continues for all the hero power. So I'm not really doing a big update video. I'm not really covering the update, I should say. I can make myself a little bit bigger while I, I rant here for a little bit. I'm just going to hop into Battlegrounds and I'm going to play a game. Um, we can take a look at the brand new stuff that they actually showcase in this article so hungry snapjaw is a new tier two beast that scales similarly to like a um so there's a demon there's a rewinder soul rewinder and then there's an undead which is xylo bones uh both of those kind of scale similar way gain health permanently uh for different things and they're kind of like interesting cards not super powerful, probably pretty good early on though, uh, as a 4-2 that gets to scale doing things that you already actively want to be doing anyways. Though, um, it is just a worse Xylo Bones, right? Yeah, Xylo Bones is exactly this, except doesn't have the word beast here, and has more starting attack, and... Yeah, so I don't know about Hungry Snapjaw. Now, Cogwork Copter is also a new card that has some Divine Shield synergy. When cards lose Divine Shield, give a minion in your hand bonus stats. Okay, so another way to pump up some things in your hand. And you can lose Divine Shield multiple times in a turn in a mech comp. So that's kind of interesting. A Noyo Troop is a Taunt Divine Shield that summons a bunch more taunt divine shields. This thing seems like it can be really annoying and pairs really nicely with the copter. And then here is, this is kind of my gripe, and I brought this up on Twitter. I'm not sure if any of you feel the same way, but if you're watching my content, I feel like there's a decent chance that you will feel the same way. So these characters are removed. No real justifications. I talked about Sinrunner Blanche being removed yesterday. Didn't really talk about Elise or Faceless getting removed, but those were cool characters that I like to make use of a lot. Puppbot, I think, was probably too strong. Uh, rest of the stuff, I feel like, is mostly, like, too weak or too irrelevant. I haven't really played with Kangors or Omega Buster. I do know that they were really good in conjunction with each other, but the new mechs kind of take you in a new direction. But here's the awkward part. Imprisoner, Inuyotron, Yorel, Spa all of these. I, I, I don't know what this means. So I either have to Google these or go onto like a Battlegrounds wiki or something, or I can just jump in the game and say, you know what, whatever happens. Now, uh, Anoyotron, I do know because this is a card in the real game, though I don't know why it's getting an update. So maybe it was something different in Battlegrounds, but now it's returning to this version. And we can also see what Champion of Yasharge does. Whenever a friendly taunt minion is attacked, gain plus one plus two permanently okay i do remember this guy taunt matters a little bit more for taunt matters could be cool i remember liking champion of yusarge previously uh, murazond is now getting changed instead of getting 
a plain copy of two different things, you get two copies of the same thing, which is going to make it a little bit easier to build around because now with brand, this gets crazy. It immediately gives you a gold character. Uh, so that seems pretty cool. And then Grease Bot, another card that says after a friendly minion loses Divine Shield, give that character plus two plus two permanently. Okay, so this is a different way to scale out the 3-2 with Divine Shield. And then quests are coming back in like two weeks at the time of this recording, probably pretty soon by the time you're watching this on YouTube, I've got a little bit of a backlog and then a bartender for Salissa. But um, I did see on Twitter that despite me not knowing what any of this means, that Salissa wasn't super happy with the pool changes. I don't know, I don't know what anything means. I'm gonna hop into it. It's a brand new game for me and we'll see how well we can do. No promises, no clue how this one's gonna go, but this is like, um, I don't wanna say like experimental, but this is, this is discovery. This is the discovery process. So if you like that type of content, then I think that this video will be your speed. If you wanna see some players that, like I said, by the time this drops, this set is like, a week old. When will this come out? Let me see. You know what? It might not be that late. I think that this video is probably slated for like July 6th or something. That's not too crazy. Um, but still, this has been out for a week at the time and I'm kind of like figuring it out for the first time in this game. So Zephyrus is a really cool hero that I have a lot of fun with. Or we could go Sin Runner. It's good with Mechs, the Sin Runner. Whereas Zephyrus is potentially better with Naga. I kind of feel like Zephyrus could be cool with the Naga st strategy that I tend to like to employ. And I just really like Zephyrus in both constructed and in Battlegrounds. Oop, and I'll make myself a little bit smaller here. I probably could get away with a bigger camera even um, with Let's no tracker on the screen, time, but partner. we'll just go for this. And I think I will start off with a mistake. Slightly smaller than the 1-4 options, but just more potential for synergy later on in the game. And I don't know how much I really want to play either of these cards for super long. Maybe it's a bad play though and on turn three I should have just sold off my one four to buy two brand new things so yeah maybe a small mistake in that capacity but we'll pick up a small Don't mistake here me. regardless and let's see is that going to be enough it will be enough to tie it gives us the exact same results on this first combat of the game so maybe no harm no foul here I think still the wrong decision. I think I just I should have went with the 1-4. For... Though, sh well, no, we're we're leveling here. What am I saying? Uh, so we'll go with that. Um, interesting. So what do, I, do I have mixed minions? Yeah, mixed minions. So that probably gives Murloc Holmes a good clue as to what I had. We do trade with a Micro Mummy here. I'm not sure what the other, if there's a new tier one mech because Puppbot is gone. Uh, but we trade with Micro Mummy, so looks like we're going to make it out of this one just fine. Could lock on to Shell Collector. I'd rather just take my chances, though, sell out of the mistake and purchase two level two Nagas or Mechs or even Undead, picking up the 2-1 that pumps up all your Undeads. That could be good as well. Though, that would pump up the mistake. Maybe I would keep that around. Oh, a Noyotron. Oh, so I... Tie. I tie. Great, 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 great. I'm fine with the tie. We don't deal my opponent as much damage, but never punished, so that's good. All right, Risen Rider and Scarlet Skull are the options here. Um, there's also a Deep Sea Angler. I do think that probably just transitioning into a more powerful board like this, I don't love Risen Rider's Taunt as far as trying to give my undead character some additional stats, but I'm still going to sell off this and purchase both of these. Could have also seen just leveling up here, potentially. 
Ooh, Shelly Walk. Cool, cool, cool. You want to say hi, Lily? Come here, sweetie. She's not hopping up, but Lily just got her groom on. You want to come up here, sweetheart? Come here. There she is. Hi, sweetie. I think you can win this thing. Got a little uh, chair set up for her here so that she can get pets while I am doing some recordings. If you ever see this, my left arm just go off to the side of the screen and start moving around. That's what's going on. Alrighty, so I would love to add some more undead to the board. Oh, and Corpse Refiner might not be a bad option here, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All in on Undead. Might play the Eternal Knight first. So that it, like, guarantees to die. But I think it's going to die no matter what here. Playing up against Mr. Bigglesworth again. The matchmaking in the early game is always super interesting to me. But... Corpse Refiner should be activating its Avenge here. Yeah, I'm going to play Eternal Knight first because I don't want the Scarlet Skull to land on the Eternal Knight because then the Eternal Knight might not die and that's just awkward in terms of uh, scaling potential here. So let's just go with this. And I don't know, going to one too aggressively level, I don't think it's bad to use your first of your three wishes to like... Just complete a triple for tempo. Um, don't tend to love to play uh, Undead, but I don't know, it feels like a good opportunity to play Undead has just presented itself. So I guess this is what we are going to go with for now. And will the Corpse Refiner be enough to grab a tie? It will do. Really nice, really nice. We also have an extra gold in the Corpse Refiner, a second Scarlet Skull, and the ability to wish already. So what we could do now is like prioritize leveling up, knowing that we're gonna be able to use three wishes to discover a second copy of whatever we, or no, find the second copy. This is not a discovery. Um, it's just, you get it. So we could use this to grab one tier six character and then use like upbeat duo to pair it off and then use three wishes again to triple it. That could be a really, really powerful engine to getting us a, a really cool build around comp. And obviously like eternal summoner is one of the things that we are chiefly looking for in the end game if we wanted to stay the course and keep on playing Undeads, uh, or Sister, whatever that card's called, Sister something. Um, but I'm not locked into any of those things by any means. You're doing great out there. There's definitely some misses, but I think that actually there's also some hits, like that one, oh, so what does this do? I gotta read the new cards. After this attack, skip a friendly minion of each type, plus one, plus two. Okay, not permanently. And this is Spawn of Nazoth. I did know this. This is a real Hearthstone card, so I was familiar with that. Okay. Scarlet Skull is gonna die a few times. Eternal Knight might have a little bit of trouble actually dying on this one, which is a little bit awkward, and we will actually lose. So, not the best. Not the best result. Hi, sweetie. But at least Eternal Knight died. I'll look on the bright side there. And now we've got Ghoul of the Feast, which is like awkward in how it synergizes with the rest of the board. We could just level up this turn. Roll for Upbeat Duo. Feels awkward to do that when we lost last turn's combat and when we're presented with like two pretty reasonable pickups. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. So Upbeat Duo was the key card there, but Champion of Yasharge. I remember this card being cool. And it seems like it could be a fun build around. We'll, we'll need to find a second Risen Rider. But we can just get rid of Corpse Refiner right here. 
Yeah, okay, I like that. Now I don't have to lock, and I can pick this up. That's pretty cool. I might even want to move the Eternal Knight back now so that the Scarlet Skulls do pump it. Um, but having a scaling character like this this early seems like it might be good. We'll find out if it's, um, like, if the meta's moved past this at this point. My opponent gets to steal something with Radio Star, but not the champion of Yasharge, which is good. And we already dealt with their Venomous. So I don't have to deal with that. Eternal Knight gets to trade with Bronze Warden. And no, actually, Eternal Knight just survives, which is kind of a risk I was taking by having all the Scarlet Skulls pump it. But I think I'd also rather take less damage too, so it seems fine. Now, if we can triple the champion by finding a second one, that could be a whole nother level, a whole nother way to take this. I don't hate the Death Swarmer, but I don't think I love it either. I would rather find the Death Rattle Death Swarmer at this point. Prize Promo Drake, think I can do a little bit better. All right, there's Champion, and then I can triple it right now. Or I can just pick up a second Taunt even though it doesn't pump anything, I think that that's probably fine. Or I could roll again for one more Risen Rider or any other taunt. Let's look for any other taunt here. Okay, and like, even if we miss, this is still fine. And I'm gonna go for this over the Death Swarmer stats. I think the Death Swarmer also could have been fine here. And then these are just going to bite us some time so that both of these get attacked into, and both of these get plus three, plus six every turn. Next turn, we could triple the champion, but it's hard to triple the champion and level up. So I think I'm going to spend one more turn on level four, potentially look for upbeat duo or the third champion and some more taunts, maybe Risen Riders. Risen Rider kind of falling off a little bit. We're just really using it to scale this. I do think the Champion of Usarge could be really Let's cool to also throw in like a Quillbores build, uh, which is something that I already really enjoy playing um, regardless. Oh, I guess there is some additional strats you can play here. If you can make a really big taunt, then your taunters will get attacked into multiple times. That's something I did not consider. All right, Eternal Knight's going to grab a bunch of stats here and then trade with a Null. And my <coughs> champions will make it through. Just petting Lily and put it right into my nose. Going to grab a swig there. All right, so... The champion not super important. Anoyotron does get attacked into twice. So it's better than Twilight Emissary. There's a pair of radio stars here too, which I could immediately triple. Oh, I'm gonna want to sell out of these Scarlet Skulls before I press this, aren't I? Okay, that was a good catch. I almost missed that. I like the double radio stars. Alright. Let's get rid of this. I hate to pick up another. I could just triple the champion this turn and prepare to triple Radio Star next turn. I think I might actually rather triple the Radio Star this turn. So there's no way to guarantee it, but let's use up my first wish. That gives me a tripled Radio Star. We're gonna play it because this will give me the econ to do the sweet stuff I wanna do next turn. It will also give me some scam in the form of Leroy or Belcher. I think I'm gonna take Belcher and I'm not gonna worry about playing it this turn. I'm gonna go down a little bit in power. Next turn, I'm gonna sell off some stuff. Potentially some top. econ that I get. Oh wow, Risen Rider plus three wishes. That's crazy. I'm not gonna make use of it here, but that is really kind of cool and interesting. We lose one of our taunt attacks, we're gonna lose a second one of our taunt attacks, so we don't get that much value out of the champions here. But I think they're big enough that we might be able to beat this Baskill. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, two champs should be able to trade with a Bream counter, and we are able to just exactly 
get that done. So this turn, we have to sell out of Zesty Shakers. We could triple the Eternal Knight. But let's start off with this. Sell out of the 3-3 three, three so I can sell one of the Zesty Shakers. Triple the Champion. This will give me a Tier 6 character. And where can we go from here? So Sister Death Whisper kind of just an interesting card in general. Young Merc Eye, triple, or caring about a battle cry. Well, right now we care about a death rattle. I might go for Death Whisper. Hmm. I don't love any of these options. Are there any other? I mean, there's dragons and battle cries. So we could potentially make young Merc Eye happen. I think that an early Death Whisper is probably just where I want to go. And maybe now I'll kind of like. Hmm. Reanimated. I could sell out of. The Annoyotron and the Zesty Shaker to play another Eternal Knight, which doesn't seem great, but seems fine. And I'm actually still going to play the Radio Star first, because then I'm more likely to steal Taunts. That's kind of interesting. Uh, right now our Hero Power gives me a copy of Eternal Knight. That I actually don't love. But Eternal Knights are good in conjunction with each other, so... Kind of hard to pass those up here, too. All right, we could steal two Scrap Scrappers. That is actually kind of awesome. Okay, that's kind of terrible. My opponent's really big here. Oh, I might be taking some damage here. This is another Lobby Leader. Yeah, I'm taking some big damages. And I don't know if I want to try to... All right, this is Cyborg Drake. I don't know if I want to try to get in with what they're doing because they're just doing it better. Like, as far as utilizing these Scrap Scrappers the most. Alright, we take a little bit of damage here. We take 10, and we are no longer the lobby leader with that. Now we are second to them. So do I want to triple Scrap Scrapper? I could also triple Myrmidon, though that seems weaker. I could intentionally triple Scrap Scrapper, though, and then go for a big endgame comp. I actually really like that. I think, I think Scrap Scrapper is just so much freaking fun. Let's see what we get here. Do we find a pulverizing beatboxer that we gave up on? No, we find the Eternal Summoner. Also, Walking Fort, which we could go that direction. Ah, this is embarrassing. I think we go Walking Fort because I think we can give Scrap Scrapper Taunt relatively easily. And I just love me some mechs. Yeah, this was the other thing we could have done. Alright, I will definitely take Drakari Enchanter and then do I go for the Lullabot right now too? That might be fine. Am I just throwing away Sister, or am I throwing away the Risen Rider first? Which of these am I tossing first here? Let's get rid of Sister. And then I'm just going to grab a Lullabot, throw in a roll, play the Lullabot on the Scrap Scrapper. Don't hate the Replicating Menace, but the idea here is to find some Annoyotrons, and then... That's going to start giving me some taunt. And then I'll find some other way to gain some other stats here. Alright, Drakari Enchanter I'm stealing two copies of potentially here. Okay. So now I've got a triple for Drakari Enchanter. If I don't die super soon, which is possible, I could... I'm not doing so great. There's a chance that now with triple Jakari Enchanter, triple Scrapper, I'm doing some cool stuff. I mean, my opponents are also doing some cool stuff. I take 15 there, and awkwardly, the damage cap is now gone. Mr. Bigglesworth will always be the first character to die. That is so awkward. Oh, wow. This is really good, too. With 
the other thing. Let's play this. Look for a mech. Give me mech. Give me mech. There's Polarizing Beatboxer. That is really great. That is really, really great. So, we might have to toss the Radio Star at some point. I kind of want to toss this. I want to find another powerful mech. Just literally no mechs yet. Have I seen a single mech? Wow. Feel like I'm going crazy. Feel like I'm going blind. Okay, this is fine. And the fact that these have divine shields also makes them good targets for magnets. Let's get rid of this, this, and I'm gonna go one more turn on the Radio Star, selling out of Operatic Belcher. I'm gonna buy both of these. And despite not having any cards in my hand, these are going to give me cards in my hand. So, we're going to keep the Annoyatron in here. I'm just thinking of where I want all of this scrap to go. I'm going to put it all on one of these two characters, so that way I can keep it around for the longest. Uh... Yeah, let's keep it on Annoyatron here. Okay, so now end of turn, Annoyatron gets plus 3 plus 3, this also gets plus 3 plus 3, this gets plus 3 plus 3, and I get 6 scrap, some of which will get plus 1 plus 1. Oh my goodness, look at all the Divine Shields. Okay, Divine Shield meta is here, apparently. I'm going to get two more Annoyatrons and triple that. Uh, Polarizing Beatboxer is going to actually be pretty big and pretty nice for me. So I don't hate that. I didn't actually find any triples here, but it's fine. These can take out... I just have to not die this turn, right? I'm able to take out some of their Divine Shields, which is good. Your minions with Divine Shield have plus 8 attack. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So they actually don't have that many stats once they lose their Divine Shields, but they... Do have a bunch of divine shields here, and that's going to be enough to trade with me with that. And I won't die, of course, but we get pretty close. Take 12, down to 6. Okay, new patch. Lots of divine shields, lots of magnets. We're going to triple our Annoyatron to start off the turn. We also get a Deflectobot. Everybody's playing mechs, except for my next opponent. That's unfortunate, because I'd love to keep in this Radio Star to just farm the heck out of this lobby. Let's see if we find another beatboxer here. No, we find Faux Reaper. Is that even better? Uh, it's just gonna clear three Divine Shields, though. Right? Let's see if we can find another triple. Might decide to level. Might cut Champion of your Sarge. I can cut the Clockwork Copter, actually. Upbeat duo with Drakari Enchanter. Oh, that's so freaking tempting. We could triple go crazy on a polarizing beatboxer. All right. We're going to get rid of Radio Star, and then I'm also going to sell out of one War Gear here so that I can pick up Upbeat duo. I need to get this gold in here. Okay, next turn, I'm not sure if I'm going to cut Champion of Your Sarge for Deflectobot. Wait, how come? Wait, what? Why did I only get... Well, I found a bug. Um, I should have gotten six scrap, but for some reason that did not happen. So that's really unfortunate. We get a win here. And I'll get to make a bunch of copies of Polarizing Beatboxer this turn, but why did I not get any scrap? That's lame. 
Well, nothing to be done about it, I suppose. I think I cut the champion this turn. But I don't know, if this thing just doesn't work, then uh, I'm just going to cut it. That's frustrating. Like, I feel I should just sell this off if it's just not going to work anyways. Murloc's got the mechs. Let's see what we find here. I'm going to sell out of champion. It's so whatever. If it doesn't work, it's not my fault. Death Rattles, I'm no longer playing that, but that could have been pretty crazy. I'm gonna try to make this work. If it doesn't, it's not my fault. Oh, Greasebot is a level 6 mech. I think it's too late here, but it's interesting. There's another beatboxer. That'll do some damage. Do I pick up a plagued tidewalker? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm gonna grab it here. I'm just afraid that. One more mech, please. It's not a mech. I mean, it is. I'll just grab Manta Queen. That's quite the army you're building, friend. I think you can win. I, I was just afraid that this stuff wasn't going to work, and uh, that would have been really frustrating. Hopefully, we can take out Leroy with the attack there. That's really good. And we take out, took out two Divine Shields. That's pretty decent as well. So now they don't have the bonus stats there. And hopefully we can get by with Deflectobod. And Tidewalker is able to actually get a kill rather than get scammed. But actually this doesn't look that great for me. We're summoning a bunch of things. We've got a big Deflectobot. But my opponent's got a big board. Persisting here. Yeah, this is a loss. Okay, well... It happens. Uh, frustrating bug to run into. Probably wasn't going to be... Uh, I don't know. It would have been a whole bunch more stats, right? But uh, that happens. Uh, what can you do? Uh, that's going to be it for me today, though. Thank you guys very much for watching. We were still able to grab a third place, and this might still be my peak. Um, awkward to run into some bugs and stuff, but uh, I wanted to add this onto the video. So I just took a screenshot of that game and went on to this website to report a bug. And I found somebody else that had a similar problem with Scrap Scrapper. Uh, Scrap Scrapper didn't add the correct number of cards to my hand at the end of my turn. My board was as follows from left to right. Leroy, Darkrai, uh, Golden Scrap Scrapper, Golden Scrap Scrapper. And I was like, okay, this is the same problem. Maybe it's an issue. I had a Golden Darkrai, which is when I noticed the problem. Uh, but similar-ish setup with two Golden Scrap Scrappers. Uh, on the turn in question, only five cards were added to my hand. When I was expecting eight the prior turn, only two cards were added to my hand. But the minions were in a different order. And this started happening when I was playing Walking Fort, which which makes it a little bit confusing. The answer is, I'm, I'm curious if anyone else in the comments was uh, sounding off. There's a finite amount of cards in the minion pool. And uh, this is something that I kind of forgot about after playing Storybook Brawl for a while. But you can get all of the cards. And then cards that generate cards won't have anything left to generate. So... Um, it wasn't a bug, it was just a gameplay mechanic that wasn't immediately obvious to me that uh, it makes it feel a little bit more fair. Uh, for sure, I didn't find a bug, I just, everybody else was playing mechs too, and I was a little bit late to the party. So, with that, that is going to be it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no luck's given. Peace.